Hi, I'm Amanda Niedermeyer, Substance Use Prevention Specialist at Sintero, and I wanted to share some tips to help you support your child during this time. In addition to physical wellness, it's really important that we focus on our mental and emotional wellness as well. Hi there, Chantel here with Sintero, and I'm here today to offer families some helpful tips and strategies that could help support our students build skills during this really difficult time. Um, I first like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are living in an unprecedented time where adults and children are experiencing much higher levels of stress and anxiety. Um, many of us have taken on multiple roles of um, not only being parents, but also now we're the teacher while also trying to balance work. Um, and that can be really difficult. Some of us have even unfortunately lost our jobs. And while so much of what is happening right now is out of our control, I'm here to remind you that there are many things that we can do that are in our control and to help us to build resilience and our ability to cope through these difficult times. So the first thing that I'd like to point out is keeping the lines of communication open with our kids. Allow your kids to ask questions. Ask your kid questions. Do your best to use open-ended questions, starting with how or what, um, that provides them the opportunity to answer with more than a yes or no. Give them the opportunity to talk about their feelings and to ask questions. And I know that that can be difficult um, as parents. We may not always have all the answers, but we can offer supportive listening. We can validate their feelings, and we can also let them know that we're not sure either, but we're here to support them and help them through whatever we need to. Make sure that you do your best to support children during this time. This is a great opportunity to practice some of the skills that were previously mentioned in keeping the lines of communication open. Ask your child how they might be feeling and ask them to share how their feelings are about things they might be missing out on and make sure to validate those feelings because they're very real and it's okay for them to feel that way. Things like healthy coping skills are very, very beneficial right now for students and parents and everybody. So ask your children, maybe they already have some coping skills that they use and ask them what they do when they need help. Some things like deep breathing and grounding can be really helpful. And there are apps like Smiling Mind, Calm, Insight Timer, and Reach Out Breathe that can be very beneficial in practicing deep breathing. Grounding is a way to bring yourself back to the present moment and pushing away other worries or thoughts about the past or future. Using the five senses can be very beneficial with this. So ask your child wherever they're sitting to look around the room and identify five things they can see, four things they can hear, three things they can touch, two things they can smell, and one thing they can taste. Additionally, try to help set a good example for your child by modeling positive thinking. Although it's very easy to struggle with the current situation, it's really helpful if we have our own outlet for managing our emotions so that we can take care of ourselves and provide the best support that we can to our children. The next thing that we can do is encourage physical wellness. Do your best to try to promote maybe going on a family walk. Um, any way that we can think of that we can get our family to release endorphins can help improve our mood. Um, so it's also a really good way to help um, family bonding. Another thing that I'd like to encourage families to do and another way that we can help support our students uh, would be trying to maintain a well-balanced meal. And I realized that that can also be a challenge um, where there are so many snacks and we're kind of in the house more than we you know, normally used to be, um, but we really want to do our best to promote, to promote healthy, balanced eating. Um, this can help protect our students from stress. One tip that has been helpful for some of my students to help decrease anxiety and stress is mindful eating. Maybe offer your student the opportunity to focus only on their food using their five senses. So that means focus on whatever food it is that they're eating, maybe noticing what the food looks like, maybe what the food tastes like, and so on using all of the rest of their five senses. Try to help your child focus on what's within their control, such as 
their choices for meals or what they wear or their attitude or when they talk to a friend or even when they complete schoolwork or they're part of the schedule. And try to help them avoid focusing on things that are outside of their control like the news and the weather and when they can see their friends. Social wellness is extremely important during this time, maybe more important than ever. So make sure to help support your child in finding ways to connect with friends and family on social media, FaceTime, and even writing letters. I've been telling students that this is the only time that they're going to be told to be on the computer and the phone as much as they possibly can. So take advantage of it now. It can be helpful for parents as well to stay connected and reach out to neighborhood groups and other support groups online as needed. Making time for family walks and family time and even staying connected with other family members and friends through playing online board games can be a great opportunity. Another thing that is helpful is to limit media exposure. So try to limit the news that you have on when your child is in the room because it can create a heightened sense of fear and uncertainty. And try to have conversations with them about what they're seeing on social media because some of it may be based on rumor and not accurate information. So try to help them put some of that into perspective to decrease their anxiety and stress level. It may be helpful to limit your news consumption to once a day rather than having a constant barrage of news streaming in at all hours of the day. Another thing that can be really helpful is limiting screen time to at least an hour and a half before bedtime. Another tip that might be helpful for parents and families would be to have a charging station in the home. This is basically where everyone turns in their electronic device at a specific time to be charged so that no one has their electronic device when it's time for bed. Maintaining a healthy sleep pattern can be really helpful and it can also help us to be able to decrease our stress. One of the things that can be really helpful is to have a schedule and a routine for your child. You may be hearing this from multiple people in multiple places, but predictability is very soothing for kids and having a schedule creates a sense of control and normalcy during uncertain times. Work with your family to come up with a plan that works for you and there's really no right or wrong way to do it. Have your kids go to bed and wake up at roughly the same time every day and build in times each day for meals, outside time, leisure time, distance learning, and family time. And make sure to do these things at roughly the same time every day. Younger children may only be able to focus for 20 minutes at a time, and that's okay. And so build in a break and then come back to it later. Older kids can probably focus for a longer period of time. Help make sure that students have a place to work that is free of distractions and where they can focus efficiently and try to help them come up with a transition plan at the end of the day or when they've completed their work where they might change clothes, shut down the computer, and close the door to the workspace. This can be really beneficial for anyone in the family who's working from home. And lastly, you may be observing some emotional and behavioral changes in your child and that's completely normal. Some changes you might observe are changes in sleep and appetite, isolation, increased emotionality, attention seeking, or just simply withdrawing and not wanting to do chores or schoolwork. If you start to feel that your child is demonstrating signs that are outside of what you feel able to manage, please do reach out for help. Reach out for support through your child's school counselor or look for local mental health providers through your insurance website or psychologytoday.com. If you have any concerns about suicidal thoughts or self-harm or safety of your child, please know that you can reach out to the crisis lines. For 18 and older, net care is available 24 hours a day at 614-276-CARE, C-A-R-E. And Nationwide Children's Hospital has a crisis line available at 614-722-1800.